Welcome back guys, John Lar here, and today I am going to be starting a new series for the channel called Why I Play. And this is just going to be a laid back series where I take a game that I enjoy playing and dig into some of the characteristics and reasons behind my enjoyment of it. Think of it as a sort of informal review where rather than objectively outlining what a game has done well or poorly, I will focus on my experiences and takeaways from said game. And how better to start this series than with a lesser known game called Superflight? Now, I picked this game up for barely $1.50 on Steam a year or two ago, and I've stacked up about 40 hours of play and loved every minute of it. The easiest way to describe Superflight is that it is a wingsuit game where you glide through colorful, procedurally generated worlds, seeking a new high score or just simply exploring these beautiful, low poly landscapes. And in my opinion, exploration is where this game shines. You see, the beauty of this game lies in the fact that every time you load into a new world, you don't know where you're going but you're moving anyway. You have to find a route that you can take. You can pick a safe route and just glide through. You can try and find a place to do cool tricks or maintain a long combo and get a whole bunch of points. Or you can just check out what's here. And sometimes you'll run into dead ends or you'll encounter something that's different from what you expected. And it's in that element of exploration that Superflight really thrives. There's a certain mindset associated with the fact that you are always moving forward. You can't go back and rewind to fix your mistakes like you can in a game that I'll be making an episode on soon. But in Superflight, you will fail. You will run into dead ends. You will mess up. You will miss your target and you will stall. But every time, you'll get right back up and you'll start again. You can try the same route with a little more knowledge under your belt you can try and find an entirely different path. Or, if you're just not liking the world, you can drop yourself into a whole new one and start this process all over again. And I guess I just don't quite know how to explain how much I love that fact, that element of this game. The pure, unbridled exploration. Digging a little deeper into my experiences with this game, I would say that there are three main ways that I play Superflight. The first of which is to just chill out and relax. I'll throw on some music or maybe a chill podcast and glide through the map without a care in the world about my score. In fact, there's even a mode in the game called Zen Mode which allows you to glide around maps without the pressure or anxiety of getting any score. It removes any indicators that would normally tell you how much score you've gotten or how much score you are currently getting. It just lets you fly around and enjoy the mechanics and landscapes of this game. Now, the second way that I play this game, and honestly probably the way that I have spent the most amount of time in this game, is to occupy myself to give me something to do with my hands and my eyes while listening to audiobooks either for school or entertainment, or just listening to an educational podcast, or even just a video in the background. I don't know about you, but personally, I absolutely love finding new things to learn. And books and podcasts and videos are all great ways to do that. But sometimes just sitting there through them isn't enough to keep me occupied. If you get it, you get it. But this game has just the perfect balance of being 
mindless enough that I can entirely focus on audiobooks that I have to listen to for school or a podcast that's trying to teach me something new while still keeping me from becoming bored or distracted or tired of that topic. I can just kind of play in the background as it goes on and maybe it makes sense for you, maybe it doesn't, but it's a way that I have found to enjoy this game. And that's really the takeaway here. This is a great game to put on in the background while listening to something else and to learn something new. It's always a go-to for me, and I would highly recommend it if you're interested in finding something like that. And finally, we have the score-chasing, stunt-finding, memorizing world's way to play this game. And I have certainly done my fair share of that as well. Everything I have said up until this point applies to this game. But when you tie in the score system, it can be really entertaining to try and memorize routes through worlds that allow you to maintain the longest combos and get the most points, taking risks trying to fit yourself through smaller and smaller areas that are longer and longer, risking your entire run on just a few thousand more points, or trying to focus on gliding around for longer, long enough to build up a higher and higher and higher score, it can really take all of your attention and focus. Both of the other ways of play that I have mentioned so far have been really pretty laid back ways of playing this game, but this totally changes that. I find that while trying to get a high score in this game, I experience a sort of flow state. I don't know how many of you have heard about the flow state or all of the theory based around that, but I'll throw up a little graphic here. Essentially. It's just when you find something that you have a reasonable level of skill in, which just comes with practice in this game, maybe a little bit of instinct, but you can build that with time too. Um, but when you have that level of skill and there's a level of challenge equally as great, you now have something that you can do well in, but to do well in it, it takes so much of your brain power and focus that while you're doing it, you don't pay attention to anything else. And that's what's known as this flow state. Personally, I really enjoy games that put me in a flow state. It's a really good way to escape from other things, kind of stop your brain from rattling about and bouncing off the walls uh, for all kinds of different things, and just be focused in on one specific thing. Improving your score, not crashing, just flying as long as you can, maintaining combos, all of that. Now, I suppose that's more than one thing, but you get the point. This game is more than capable of bringing you into that state, despite also being the chill game that can occupy you while you listen to stuff, as I mentioned before. It's really awesome how versatile this game can be, the duality, so to speak. It can do both of these things very well. If you are looking for that flow state, you can find it in this game. If you are looking for a way to relax, you can find it in this game. And if you are looking for a way to occupy yourself, you can find it in this game. I seem to remember that they market this game with the gimmick of it being the price of a cup of coffee. And well, I've never had a cup of coffee last 40 hours and still interest me. So yeah, that's it for the first episode here. Uh, that's really all I have to say about Superflight. I would love to talk to you guys in the comments about this new series in general. Uh, what did you think about the idea? What might you like to see me do uh, in the future for it? Uh, how do you think I did, just personally? Was the audio good? Was the editing good? Did you like the style? Did you like the length? Were there other things that you liked or disliked? Obviously, use the rating. If you don't have time to leave a comment, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you thought. However, if you do have the time and you've listened all the way through this, I would greatly appreciate to hear just what are your thoughts on this. This is the first episode, and I really enjoyed making it, and I really look forward to making uh, some for other games as well. But I would love to see what you guys think about it so that I can improve for the next one. Other than that, if you're new to the channel, as always, subscribe, and otherwise, I will see you guys 
next time.